Hallo, guten Tag, guten Abend. Willkommen zu meiner Residenzion zu Galavant Berlin mit Rose and Jones. Danke. So, yeah, that was my very bad pronunciation, probably. Welcome all to my review of Berlin with Lizzie, Rose and Jones. So, let's just start with a little history, a little weird facts about Berlin. Now, I could talk loads about this because Berlin is a city I probably most want to visit. And I think culturally to us Brits here, the German people are probably the most like us. With the love of beer, football, food, our sense of humour. Plus, up until the 20th century, Germany, well, the German states and Britain were probably the closest allies in Europe, really. And had always been at peace and pretty much got on with each other. But yes, let's go on to um, Berlin. Kind of following that theme, one thing not a lot of people realise is in the 20s and the 30s, Berlin was one of the most open-minded, forward-thinking cities, much like it would be today in, in modern 21st century. It was open to kind of, you know, sex parties, wild nights. People could be openly homosexual as far as I've kind of seen. wasn't that much of a big deal then and so Berlin was actually quite ahead of its time at that point um, the city itself has more canals than Venice and Amsterdam it, obviously what it's quite famous for I think is it has a massive alternative art scene and music it's, it's one of the places every clubber wants to go it's got obviously it's famous for its techno music it's metal it's thrash metal and heavy rock music um, now, Berlin itself was actually the capital of the state of Prussia before Germany unified, and then became the capital of Germany. And then, not a lot of people outside of Europe, I think, really realised this. Between the 40s and the 90s, Berlin was not the capital. Um, it was actually, well, the capital of West Germany was Bonn. So... Not a lot of people really realise that Germany was a separate country for for them decades, sadly, and it had a, a war built between it. I know you've all heard of the Berlin War, but that didn't come down until 1989. So the, the city itself has quite a colourful history, and I think it's one of the things that adds to its culture. Let, we're not going to talk silly things, but there's no there's no country in Europe that hasn't been involved in something at some point in its history and that's what gives some of these great cities their culture and their character because they can look at themselves and at lots of these histories anyway this is not a history lesson or a politics lesson but that's some a few facts about Berlin and a little spoiler this is possibly the most interest no that, that sounds wrong it's possibly been the most challenging to me this fragrance now I'll do a little spray so we can get the the opening again. Right, hopefully, yeah. Right. right, now, the opening for me, basically, it's, um, it's, it's dark and it's sweet, but it's got this bitter greenness running through it. Yeah, the, the definite bitter greenness. And it smells a little bit fizzy, uh, and the citrus comes through, mixing. And you do get the tea quite early on. And to me, it reminds me of a Lady Grey tea, which is like a different version of Earl Grey, but it's got more kind of orangey notes and things in it. And there's, there's the pepper spice. Now, the opening is actually really interesting, and I did really enjoy it at this stage. However, this is personal taste, and this is me personally. As it develops, the woods kind of start to come through a lot more as does the earthy vetiver and the patchouli is, is very, very, um, what's the word, earthy and, and rough and, and kind of damp. The Lady Grey kind of citrusy tea kind of thing does stay over the top, but it, it does seem to get more and more bitter. And um, the, the citrus kind of stuff fades on me, and it just becomes very green no I'm not it's always hard to, to describe things isn't it this 
is nothing like Encre Noir from Lalique, but it's got that same idea behind it. They don't smell alike, they both go in very different directions. But that's the only really other dark, very dark green one I can compare it to. And how did this? This does have a um, similar touches. It does. There is elements where you think it smells a bit smoky. It's it's the patchouli and the vetiver that are kind of the main things for me in this. Um, now, despite me not loving this one, I'm really struggling with it. I'm going to weirdly say something here. I'd put this as possibly one of my favourites because it's so unlike anything I've ever smelt before. It's so creative and actually there's, there's something about it that I can see this Berlin relation to it. I don't know if I mentioned in my facts, but I think it's 44% of Berlin is forestry and green. And also along with that with Berlin, it's, um, you know, it's, it's got this kind of industrial reputation. It's also got this very, like it says in the description, a very kind of bohemian forward description, which is where the the patchouli and stuff comes in. Now, for about half an hour or so, I I genuinely really like this. I didn't really, obviously, I've seen the thing. I've tried to avoid it, but you see the thing here and there. I didn't really get what people meant. I thought it was beautiful, but it just gets too dark for me. Doesn't mean that's bad. There'll be lots of people who do like this, and and in the kind of far dry down, it's kind of a bit kind of a dark green wood I'd describe it as you know when you see like a log with with loads of moss on and it, it's it's damp and it kind of smells a bit like that to me there is the, the bit of sweetness does stay but the more kind of bitter green thing dominates to me I've I've tried with it about I should have tried more with it but I've got about three four layers out of it and each time sometimes it's been more sweet on me and sometimes it's been more bitter um, would I buy it? No, because I don't know when it, it's not my cup of tea, but actually, it, when you try these fragrances, Tokyo is obviously quite unique as well, but I'd say this is a must try out of all of them. Not that the others aren't, you know, unique and original, but this is possibly the most artistic and the most clever out of them all. Not that I'm saying they're not clever, but I just love what he's done here, and I think I think this is great really actually although not for me it's still one of my favorites so yes that's berlin and over to you lizzie what did you think do you think i'm a nutcase hi guys welcome back welcome to episode six of our gallivant travels of course we've already heard from the lovely john over at scented snowdrops daka john and good arbent to John and to you all. So of course as you've already heard from our John we are back this week with our Gallivant travels and we are talking about Berlin. Thanks so much John for your account of Berlin that was extremely interesting. I've been wearing Berlin for the last three days and I think I'm ready to tell you what I think. As you can see I've been busy in my garden today there's some lovely flowers that are actually out and I just figured I'd pick a few. This rose is as pink in life as you see it on the screen it is so vibrantly fuchsia pink it's just absolutely beautiful. And I've just noticed how cute is that though? Little heart shaped leaf. Anyway, let's talk about this fragrance and let's go into the little matchbox packet here. So Berlin is described as a woody citrus spicy. So while I reapply it, let's just go through some notes, shall we? So this opens out with grapefruit, lemon, clementine. It has a heart of black pepper, black tea. And the it, it settles down with Haitian vetiver, uh, cedarwood and patchouli. I've been trying it out for the last three days and I deliberately haven't looked at any reviews, I've not even looked at any notes, I've done it completely blind and just gone with what I feel and what I think is in here. And I instantly picked up on lemons. Not oranges John, <laughs> lemons okay. Not just lemon, there's that citrus and now I know it's grapefruit. It is grapefruit. And also there's mandarin, no clementine. It is such a lovely mix of all those three notes. This immediately made me think of Aqua Universalis by Maison Francis Cudgeon. And that one, this one is like that, but it's softer and it's more natural smelling. Now John spoke about this being quite dark in the opening, um, very, very green, very bitter green, and he picked up on the tea. I think this sits very differently on me than, than on John, I really do. 
it's not dark um, it's not sweet but I don't find it overly bitter um, and the tea I love tea fragrances but it doesn't jump out at me so the fact that there's tea in here is one of the reasons I'm probably enjoying it but it doesn't jump out singularly I pick up far more on the citruses and the sort of more herbaceous quality behind the citruses. I love a fragrance that has duality. And this one does, although I feel like I can pick up on two opposing aspects at the same time through the wear of this fragrance. Going back to what John said about the bitter greenness, I'm not getting a green as such. I think the citruses are very natural and still on the tree. It's green in that aspect. But the more herbaceous quality in here is coming from the vetiver. I'm definitely getting the sweetness and that's probably coming from the fruits. This fragrance drifts through a lovely balancing act of both fruits and vetiver, and swimming between them is this subtle tea note. It's quite subtle for me. We're about eight minutes in, and the, it's settling into its base notes, and it is becoming very woody. Um, but it seems to be running so creamy and woody, and I'm getting a cotton wool-like fluffiness. Yeah, woody, creamy, fluffy, and a hint of that pepper but what does surprise me is the slight saltiness that I'm getting from somewhere I was expecting to see ambergris on here um, but I was starting to get this kind of salty creamy slightly sickly vibe it's that scent that I get addicted to but all the while remaining a fresh citrus um, clean bright and breezy scent the fruits in here do remain bright almost sparkling so when I talk about this being a duality of a fragrance. I'm talking about it being as sweet as it is salty, you know, as fresh as it is fluffy, as sparkling as it is creamy. <laughs> and all that is wrapped up in actually what is quite a gentle fragrance. I do agree with John in its saying about its artistic nature. Um, obviously this does sit very differently on me than it does to John and for that reason it doesn't um, appeal to him. And This is very enjoyable for me. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and say it, this is my favourite from Galavant so far. It's very, very pleasant. I like the opening, I like the dryer down. I'm starting to realise that I love, really love grapefruit in fragrances. And I'm starting to realise that I like Vesuva. I just take it for granted that it's often there in the base notes, but I enjoy it a lot in a lot of fragrances. So there's a lot of notes in here that do work for me. And I think this is a beautiful balance of all of them. Now I will say that Berlin is quite a shy fragrance. It doesn't really project too much on me at least and it doesn't last very long it seems to float away from my skin after about three hours four hours personally I don't mind a subtle fragrance that's absolutely fine with me I'm not one for beastly fragrances at all I can see Berlin being part of my collection I think it would fit in very nicely when I sprayed this earlier my husband was standing next to me and I figured you know I'm gonna ask him what he thinks I said please just summarize this in three words so he said citrus fresh and holiday and I really like that. It is definitely a scent I would wear on holiday because it's not overpowering. It's not dense or thick, but it's it's clean and it's actually quite smooth and, and classy. I'm thinking John will probably be disagreeing with me and wondering what the hell I'm talking about because we clearly have two very different accounts of this fragrance. But that's a perfect example of always testing the fragrance out for yourself. I think that's about as much as I can say on Berlin now. I think I've actually gone through all my notes and yep, I'm gonna put Berlin back to bed for now. There's two more in the house that we still haven't tried, so I'm about to pick our next one. Before I do, I just wanted to say thank you very much to John again, especially for all the amazing trivia at the start of each of his videos. I, I'm just not knowledgeable enough for that kind of thing and I really appreciate the fact that he goes out of his way to offer us a bit of background um, for each of these different cities and different destinations so thanks John so last of all we have Los Angeles and Tel Aviv how are we going to choose what I'm going to do put them there this lovely little gallivant sort of hand luggage style tag I'm going to just drop it from a height and then whichever one it lands nearest that's the one we're going to obviously do next here we go <laughs> okay it's gone to the left it's gone to the left which means Los Angeles is our next destination so John pack your bags we're traveling across the pond to the City of Angels. And I hope we'll be seeing you all there in episode seven. So that is all from me. Take care guys. I'll see you on the next one. Over and out. Um.